everybody, this is Ron from CMP, otherwise known as Canadian Maker Project. So we're here at Maker Expo 2018 in Kitchener. This is happening from June 2nd to June 3rd of 2018. So what we got here is we got makers of all types, from your CNC work to your wiring, all the way down to using a spinning wheel and making your own wool. So why don't you come along with me with this journey as we go look around and see what we can find. Remember, please, if you're liking what I'm doing, hit that thumbs up. Also remember to hit the subscribe and hit that bell. That way you know when we produce more content like this. So without further ado, why don't we go walk around, see what we can discover here at Makers Expo. Maker Expo in Kitchener, and I'm here with uh, Randy from uh, DIY Pinball. And uh, you got your pinball machine here to talk about. Yeah, for sure. So this is a nitro ground shaker from about 1978, except we've uh, I mean, hold we've uh, re replaced all the electronics with our new custom system, uh, Linux-based. So we use a Raspberry Pi computer and our own custom driver boards uh, hooked up over a CAN bus network, so same as in a car. For software, we use a system called Mission Pinball Framework that uh, some folks in the States have come up with. It's a Python-based system, and it's wonderful for us because it means we don't have to write code to use it. And uh, how long would you say that this took to uh, get set up with the Raspberry Pi? Because uh, you said there was other stuff that you had to add to it to make it work? Yeah, so uh, to assemble the uh, circuit boards took us a couple days to do. It was a couple months of design before that. To actually do the wiring on this machine and the initial setup, we got done in about a day and a half. So, you know, getting all the work done ahead of time with the electronics design really helped to get it done. Okay. And also, um, let's talk about a little bit of this here that you said that we're talking about. So, this is designed for the flippers and the drop targets. You had to reprogram them. Well, these these mechanisms we've taken basically straight from an old pinball machine. Uh, we've hooked them up to a demo setup using our circuit board. So this is just a demonstration to show people how these mechanisms work. So the flipper here, people can come up, push a button, and the flipper will trigger. These drop targets, people can push them down, push the button there, you go ahead, and it fires the solenoids in there to pop them back up. So we've got an older version of our setup back here, with, again with a Raspberry Pi and our driver board to drive those. And I also heard that you said that you needed a... Um uh, this is wired, correct? That's connected to the internet, is that correct? Uh, it's connected to Ethernet. Uh, we log in over SSH to control things. So we have to you know, have my laptop here to start up the software. Uh, we had trouble earlier today connecting to it. Wouldn't respond directly over Ethernet. So one of our guys had to run out to the computer store real quick, buy like a little TP-Link router so that we could log into it once it had an IP address. And where can people find more information about the whole setup and what you guys do? So our website is DIYPinball.ca, which we update sporadically. On Instagram, we're DIYPinball, and on Twitter, we're DIYPinball. Well, thank you so much for uh, spending the time with me, and uh, all the best to you at the Expo. Thank you very much. Hi. Once again, we're back at the Maker Expo. I'm here with Stuart from Making... Sorry, makers make change, and I have him here. And he's talked. And he was telling me about this device over here, which is pretty interesting. Uh, can you give me a little bit more of what this is all about? Sure. This is the uh, lip sync. It's a uh, 
mouth, mouse for your mouth. Um, if you uh, can't move your hands or a very limited mobility, say through quadriplegia, this allows you to control your tablet just with your mouse, uh, mouth, and then um, clicking is with sip and puff on the on the tip of it. Um, so this is open source. It was originally designed through a grant through the Google Foundation, and uh, we have these built at uh, build events either at schools or at, at corporate sponsors, and uh, w it's proven quite successful. And you're telling me that you had another device that you're like these are made specifically for people who have abilities that they can't like do stuff. That's correct. Absolutely. I mean, um, some of these assistive technology devices can be used by many people. I mean, this is a key turner. It's just a very simple 3D printed part that holds a key so that um, if you can't normally open the door. So, um, and this is part of Makers Making Changes open source library, which is on our website, makersmakingchange.com. You can sign up, you can download these parts, you can connect with people who need them, or if you need assistive technology, you can uh, sign up and ask for a device in your neighborhood and someone will make it for you. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Well, thank you. And uh, like he said, go check out his website and um, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm here at Maker Expo and I ran into Quartz Lab. And Quartz Lab is a makerspace in KW, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Uh, we're a makerspace, we're run by members. Uh, that helps keep the lights on, so we all pay a little bit. And that allows us to buy things like laser cutters, um, 3D printers, and a lot of people come for the tools, but what they don't realize where the real value is, it's where, um, it's where the members are. It's all of us sharing our information openly and just, uh, yeah. We had a balloon artist come in one day and he's like, hey, you know what? I want to make a machine that inflates balloons. So that's exactly what I wound up doing. And now he sells them as an actual product. And he had no clue how to do that. But we had people that knew how to do circuits. We had people who knew how to do air. And it, was, it just put it all together. It was great. Yeah. Great. And uh, what about this thing here? So we can get a little bit about yeah. this. So this is a tank tread that I've designed. Um, and what I would like to do eventually is, in the far off future, not anytime soon, is put it on a wheelchair. So there would be four of these, and they would be all together. Shall I give you a demonstration? Sure. All right. So just to let you guys know, this is a little bit noisy. Yeah, sorry about that. So this wheelchair motor, um, it moves the whole assembly this way and that way. Um, well, away from my face, preferably, right? Um, and it has these, this bicycle shock in here, which allows it to um, just push, like if, if somebody were to have a lot of weight, it would support them fairly well. Um, yeah, but that's just basically it. So it's meant to have like, not just as an all-terrain vehicle, but to be able to climb upstairs eventually, because a lot of places aren't made accessible for people. Like just painting a door blue doesn't make it a wheelchair bathroom door, just saying. <laughs> Oh, I understand that completely. Well, and where can people find out more about the club? Uh, so you could find us at uh, quartzlab.ca or check us out in person any Tuesday night at 7 till 9 is our open nights. And that's at Charles and Kent in Kitchener. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Dave. I do appreciate it. And uh, happy building to you. Yeah. Pleasure meeting you. Hi, once again, thanks for watching us here at uh, CMP. I'm here with uh, Peter right now with his exhibit from MakerWiz, and uh, we'll just find a little bit more about uh, MakerWiz and what you guys do. Hi. Yes, we're MakerWiz from Richmond Hill, Ontario. We're here at Maker Expo today showing off some drone hacking. Uh, here we have the Spark from DJI. We printed this uh, drone delivery system you can take off with a payload and then go somewhere else and then just touch the ground and then it falls off just like that we also have, that's pretty cool we also have landing gear for our mavic here we have some uh of course prop, prop guards can be 3d printed even the propellers can be 3d printed now yeah and you can 3d print the ch chassis of the drones a lot of different uses and we're printing of course uh, drone keychains for everyone <laughs> that's always the cool part is the keychains come on <laughs> right, right, right. 
Yeah, so we're a company doing three things mainly. We run workshops and uh, camps for kids and for grown-ups. Uh, well, the workshops for grown-ups, not the camps, of course. Uh, in maker, technology and 3D printing. We uh, sell equipment to the schools and the libraries, uh, maker equipment. And also we print things for businesses, prototype for them. Yes. Uh, and where would people find out more information if they want to find out more about about what you guys print and uh, all the drone activity that you do? We're on uh, so all the major social media platforms, so Facebook, uh, Twitter, and Instagram. And, of course, our website is makerwiz.com, M-A-K-E-R-W-I-Z.com. Well, thank you so much for taking this a little bit of time, and uh, have fun at the uh, Makers Expo. Thank you very much.